in continuation of the Indus Valley civilization that we were seeing, let us see some, some more information about Indus Valley era and Indus Valley civilization itself. Now, as I was saying in the last class, see there are three contemporary civilizations for Indus Valley civilization itself. While Indus Valley was on the banks of Indus River, the Mesopotamians were on the bank of Tigris Euphrates River. The Egyptians were largely on the banks of Nile River Bank or Nile River. And then the Chinese were on the Yellow River Valley or commonly called the Huang Ho River system. Now, one word of caution for you to understand is while Indus Valley seems to be a very urban civilization, the other three were not urban by any chance or by any sequence. They were actually very, very rural at the period when Indus Valley was having baked brick constructions, Mesopotamians hardly had a housing. We have seen Indus Valley's town planning. Now, let us see quickly Indus Valley religion with some features of Indus Valley society like for example, Indus Valley religious features. Now, Indus Valley people in terms of their religion, they did a mix of animal worship and nature worship both. Now, nature worship is, they had two types like mother goddess signifying mother earth and Pasupadinada or also called Proto Shiva, a sort of yogi who was actually worshipped, indicating animals or as a, you can say, a representative of animals. The mother goddess was worshipped as a terracotta figure, a terracotta baked clay doll identified with mother goddess. From her stomach, a little tree of life actually is projecting out. I mean, that's how they show. From the stomach, a little tree of life is actually projecting from the mother goddess. And there is also a seal which depicts mother goddess. There is also sealings which they do. And there is evidence of some incense sticks. Like for example, agarbati type of thing were observed. Probably best example for this or best way to understand this is they might have had some sort of spiritual worship. Some model, some sort of spiritual worship. Pashupati Nada, historians have called him a three-faced god, I mean one face and two other faces like this, three-faced god, three faces. Seated in a yogic posture in Padmasana, surrounded by two antelopes near the legs, rhinoceros and a buffalo on the right side, tiger and an elephant on the left side. So, rhinoceros, buffalo, tiger and an elephant, four animals and this yogi is wearing horns with two antelopes near the legs. This, indi this is what R. S. Sharma indicated or R. S. Sharma thought as a symbolization of nature. Apart from this, there seems to be evidence of animal worship, particularly unicorn and humped bull. Bull, buffalo, tiger seems to be worshipped or seems to be important on a religious or spiritual sense. Humped bull, very important. There are some mythical animals as well, like for example, unicorn or unicorn. Unicorn is like a sheep with a single horn, a sheep with a single horn like this, unicorn, three-headed chimeras, again a type of sheep type of animal. Now, these are mythical animals not seen in reality, no archaeological evidences of this. And based on burials and based on religion, as I said, Indus Valley people seems to have a mixture of nature worship and animal worship. Both nature worship and animal worship. But the speciality of Indus Valley is while they do have the practice of worship, we have zero evidence of existence of any temples. No places of worship, 
no specific temple type of constructions and most of the representation was basically symbolic like for example linga yoni the shivalinga that we have today there is an evidence of that in indus valley civilization of the terracotta figures the common beliefs these people did have amulets amulets are like little lockets probably for some sort of superstitious beliefs or magical charms and there were also seals depicting sacrifice sacrifice of animals and fire altars fire altars are like three stepped uh, you know the fire pot or fire table well, in which today we do yagna yagna kunda or havan kund was observed here fire altars harappans did have the practice of dis burials and burial cremation both were there cremation is after the body death the body is burnt ashes are collected burial is directly buried and most probably people were buried with their pottery ornaments sometimes even with their pets this may be a way of understanding that harappans did have the practice of believing life after death this was there and some of the burials were also done in clay urns clay urn basically looks like this like a big clay pot the body is buried like this in that with all their other ornaments all their goods sometimes clothing sometimes even children pets it is buried just like that as such burials we see circular and rectangular burials rectangular burials like this circular burials like this standard circular cremation standard observed there is some evidences of megalithic burials in surka toda and dolavira what is megalithic burial is they bury the body in the center then create a sort of structure on the sides and layer a bit of stones like this on everywhere megalithic burials is basically a practice generally associated with people who believe in life after death and worship of the dead that is also observed here and as i said food grains ornaments beads jewelry they are also buried along with the bodies they are all buried along with the bodies now coming to the next important topic of indus valley their economy and their trade see naturally we will never be able to know indus valley polity or indus valley's administrative structures because we have no information about them we we have not yet deciphered their language indus valley script or language is still unknown i mean we know but we don't know how to read it that's why we have to see the indus valley's economy indus valley civilization does show evidence of bullock carts and the strangest thing is these bullock carts have are exactly same that we use today in our rural states even in our rural villages the bullock cart that we use bullock cart with a plus symbol in the front where the as there's a single central rod and then two rod uh, a rod horizontally two bulls standing with a cart in the background exactly same model is observed i'll show you the image boats were also seen indus valley people remember lothal was a, a port an artificial sea port so plenty of boats boats were used for trade mainly for trade and these were also flat craft now the presence of flat craft means flat boats like this the presence of flat carts indicates long distance travel they might have been doing long distance travel and as such main raw materials in indus valley that we observe is stone steatite wood shells basically shells and conch shells which are observed and there are plenty of finished goods like ornaments in fact gold ornaments plenty of gold ornaments were observed in indus valley civilization plenty of gold ornaments in fact hair band was seen of gold a, 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 entire flat surface hair bands ivory 
was used as a comb material. As such, Indus Valley people were addicted to gold and silver, plenty of gold and silver. And historians, all of them do agree that Indus Valley civilization ha does not show any evidence of monetary exchange or material money. Everything was on the basis of barter. Barter system is I give you a good, you give me a good and based on the value of and demand of each, we exchange goods rather than buy and sell. Indus Valley people had plenty of trade locations, Afghanistan, most of the coastal regions of Persia, Dilmun coast, Makran coast near Oman, North and West India, Gujarat, Kutch, all that region. They even had trade with Mesopotamia. In fact, with Mesopotamia, they had majority of trade and Indus Valley's natural creation was cotton. Indus Valley people, Indus Valley civilization is actually the creator of cotton. Cotton was excavated for the first time in Indus Valley civilization only. It was grown in Indus Valley civilization. Now coming to Indus Valley script, as I said, script, Indus Valley script is observed in a lot of things. Terracotta seals, dolls, their carvings, sometimes their construction, house walls, they also have terracotta writings. Seals, bones, ivory, copper. So, Indus Valley people were actually the original creators of cotton. Cotton was grown naturally here. And majority of the cotton trade used to happen with Mesopotamia. In fact, Mesopotamians used to call Indus Valley people as Meluhans. Meluha is the word for cotton by Indus Valley civilization. Okay. The Indus Valley script is observed on Indus Valley seals, bones, tablets, ivory, copper, multiple places. At the same time, remember, in the Indus Valley seals, there is absolutely no reference to a camel or a horse. No camel or horse in Indus Valley seals. At the same time, most of the seals do have something written on the top. Now, the only problem is we have not yet deciphered the Indus Valley script. Now, the reason why we have not yet deciphered is for deciphering or for reading a language, we need a contemporary similar language. We do not have one from Indus Valley civilization. We actually do not have an equivalent contemporary deciphered language with the Indus Valley civilization. And most of the inscriptions that whatever Indus Valley people have given on their seals are very short. They are hardly about 8 to 15 characters. And when we try to read the entire Indus Valley script, like according to Sir John Marshall and Mario Perigi, Indus Valley has a bare minimum 400 alphabets. 400 alphabets. It's a pictographic script. That is, the script is basically written in the style of images, similar to Egyptian. And it is written in Bostrophedon, that is left to right to left and left to right, zigzag pattern. Written in a single format, like Indo-Aryan, Indo-European script is written from left to right. It does not work that way with Indus Valley civilization. Since the writing style is complicated, there is no contemporary language and it is a fully pictographic script, this is the problem with Indus Valley civilization. That is basically an example of the pictographic script that you can see there. Also, you see how it is written in Blostrophedon zigzag. If you observe the image of a leg, the legs if you see, they go zigzag. On the top channel, it is left side. Then the next one, if you see the foot image, that is right side and then left side and then right side. So, the direction of the language is zigzag. This is the complication with Indus Valley civilization. And when we see the next topic, next subtopic of Indus Valley, agriculture, almost all Indus Valley settlements are river settlements on the banks of river systems, Indus river system. Agriculture was completely river based. Indus river generally seems to have always inundated this place. Flooding was a common pattern or a very common pattern. Jodaro was itself built seven times. 
Mohanjadaro seems to have been built and rebuilt seven times. Wheat and barley were major production. Wheat and barley, they both were actually brought into Indus Valley civilization from West Asia. They are not natural crops of Indus Valley. This was a prelims question previously. Sowing happens in November, reaping happens in April, pretty much similar to what we do even today. They were the first people, as I said, to reap cotton. Greeks call it Sindon, S-I-N-D-O-N, means the produce of Sindhu. Sesamum and mustard seeds were also cultivated in Indus Valley civilization. Indus Valley shows no major evidence of any style of canal irrigation. It was completely rain-fed irrigation and agricultural crops. At the same time, Indus people did practice domestication of animals or animal husbandry. Mainly domestication of animals. Buffalo, sheep, ox, goat, pigs were commonly taken care of. Dogs and cats seems to have been major pets of Indus Valley civilization people. Dogs and cats. Camels and asses like a type of donkey. They were used for transport. Other than this, we do not, again as I said, no domestication or no evidence of domestication of horse. People of Indus Valley did knew elephant and rhinoceros because those two images are seen on the Pashupadi Nada seal. An interesting innovation of Indus Valley people was dental drill, bow drill, buttons. In fact, cloth buttons were observed in Indus Valley civilization. These buttons were mostly seen in gold. Gold buttons were observed in Indus Valley civilization. Stepped well, Indus Valley innovation, unique to Indus Valley. From here, everybody followed this. Copper majorly came from K3 mines of Rajasthan. Copper and bronze tools were mainly observed in Indus Valley. Most, in fact, with a bronze, they even used to make a mirror. A bronze mirror means bronze was polished to such an extent that it would reflect the image like a mirror. Chisels, arrowheads, knives, razors, flat axes, every tool that we use today was seen in Indus Valley. Always important fact to remember is Indus Valley people had zero knowledge of iron. No knowledge of iron, no evidence of presence of iron. Largest set of copper tools were found in the area Gunjeria. Largest set of Indus Valley copper tools. In terms of Indus Valley's other information, some small miscellaneous information, facts important for your preliminary exam. Indus Valley people did have a decimal system in the multiples of 16. Now, the most important unique example for you to remember this is, you know, till 1952, India had 16 ana made 1 rupee. And even today, if you observe, gold is bought in Telugu, they call it Savaram, 8 grams. 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 has been the decimal sequence of India. Coming all the way from Indus Valley civilization. In fact, 16 chatangs is about 800 grams. That is one share. Previously, they used to buy goods as shares. 16 ana, 1 rupee. Indus Valley people used 16 as their base decimal unit. We use today 0, 1 as our base, base decimal unit. Indus Valley people used to use 16 was their base decimal unit. Most of the raw material for Indus people came from these regions. Copper came from K3 mines of Rajasthan. Chert came from Sindh, Rohri Hills. Carnelian beads mostly came from Gujarat and Sindh. Lead was always brought from South India. Lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli is basically a blue color stone. Mainly came from Kashmir and Afghanistan. This blue color stone is basically the same blue color of this slide. You see the background blue color. This is basically indigo blue. 
lapis lazuli used to be this most of the indus people used to have this um, addiction a sort of over usage of blue in their constructions observed here turquoise and jade came from central asia and iran amethyst came from maharashtra naturally jade was important one unique feature of jade is jade is a preservation material for bullion which is gold and silver you put gold in a jade box gold doesn't become dull naturally indus people used too much of gold jade was to be observed indus valley pottery is called red and black pottery ware indus valley pottery is called red and black pottery ware that is red color pot with black paintings on it three types of pottery pottery which were used for household purposes pottery which was used for designer purposes that is decoration which designs and everything and then there was also a pottery which was called perforated pottery perforated pottery is basically like a pot with holes most probably to make liquor to strain liquor and remember uh, liquor has always been part an evidence from indus valley civilization period and almost all indus pottery was wheel based wheel based pottery is basically where pots are made from a wheel wheel based pottery have perfect structure perfect finish and fine line finish indus valley people as i said used a lot of ornaments gold silver in fact long beads like this there used to be long bead chain they used to wear this long bead chain across their neck very common in indus valley civilization main occupations which we observe in indus valley civilization this is strictly on the basis of observation is seal making means those who make these flat seals shell carving those who carve on the shells boat makers stone masons in the naturally gujarat region they used to cut stones to make constructions stone masonry was a common feature ornament making goldsmithy that was a common feature pearl working pearls were also used in indus valley civilization artificial pearls and even fine line blue color pearls finished pearls and then pottery potterers were common in indus valley civilization potterers this is the best example of a seal as i told you this is basically a seal a unicorn that's a unicorn that you can see there a unicorn seal this is pashupadinada seal pashupadi seal you see yogi with horns elephant tiger bull buffalo in the script which we don't know how to read and then two antelopes at the bottom two antelopes at the bottom humped bull seal and unicorn seal all of them made of steatite or soap stone sometimes also called soft stone soap stone or soft stone now the bottom one as i said is indus valley scriptures okay now when we see some information about their polity as i said no information we don't know how they ruled we don't know what sort of structure they had we don't know what they ruled we don't know what their structure was we don't know what their administration was no information one guess work which we do in indus valley is probably they were a type of merchant society probably but there is one estimation which is given by r s sharma according to historian r s sharma there was an abnormal domination of women in the indus society there were too many women that's why one thing we understand is probably indus valley people may might even have a woman ruler and in terms of recreation as well indus valley shows evidence of yoga 
there are seals which show different asanas. Indus Valley people knew gambling, they knew dancing, they ev we even excavated in Chanhudaro a chess board. A chess board was excavated. Uh, a terracotta flat panel of Ludo was excavated. Indian game that we play Ludo. And there is also evidence of musical instruments. String instruments and drum instruments. Now, when we see all the topics that I have discussed with you, what information I have given you, they definitely seem to be quite advanced. Very urban, well established, well set up. The only problem is approximately 1750 BC, the civilization vanished. No information what happened. Multiple causes are given. One of the main major cause which is given is a natural cause. One story we believe is Indus Valley people went through too much of urbanization, too many cities, too much of deforestation and you remember Indus Valley settlement is entirely based on Indus river system. The Indus river system is very, very flooding. I mean, it is a Himalayan river always gets into floods. That might have created more trouble, led to natural causes. Dying, drying of rivers, deviation of the river pattern, what we call um, the um, river meandering, shifting of rivers, floods, droughts. According to one of the recent estimates, approximately 900 year period of Indus Valley, the last 900 years had a sequence of floods, drought and flood and drought and flood and drought continuously. This made people of Indus Valley become very uncomfortable with their region. The second biggest reason is deforestation. All the forests in their region was cut down. See, again, in geography, when you understand this region, the place which we today call Indus Valley civilization and in fact, Rajasthan seems to have been highly uh, forest area with good amount of forests. It is only now after the Saraswati river dried up, after the Luni river dried up, that, in, that region has become a complete desert. The third theory which recently Romila Thapar historian supported was the Aryan migration theory. John Marshall calls it Aryan invasion theory. There is a theory which is given in Indus Valley saying that Aryans from Central Asia came to Indus region. They attacked and killed some of the indigenous people called Dasyas, D-A-S-Y-A, -S Dasyas. And killing these Dasyas, they further expanded themselves into India. This is called Aryan invasion theory. A slightly lower style of this is Aryan migration theory, which implies that Aryans came from Central Asia. They joined themselves with the locals, indigenous people, a kind of hybrid was created, Aryan Indus mix. And that settlement continued and they eventually moved to Ganga Yamuna region and created the first settlements of India, the Vedic period. And also decline of trade with Egypt, decline of trade with Mesopotamia is the fourth biggest reason which is given for Indus Valley civilization's decline. Historian Shireen Ratnakar gives this theory. Sir John Marshall, Robert Rikes, R Y K E S, Robert Rikes and John Marshall, they believe Indus Valley got eliminated mainly because of environmental concerns, mainly because of environmental damages, excessive flooding, excessive um, deforestation. And according to Mortimer Wheeler, Sir Mortimer Wheeler, it is Aryan invasion theory. Now, historians are unable to conclude which of these really happened or which of these completely happened. A slight, you can say, tab tabular form of understanding is this. Aryan invasion given by Wheeler and Gordon. This is very important for your prelims. Fairchild, Mortimer Wheeler says, ecological disturbances. Dales, M. S. Watsa, Henstey, Lambrick say it was change in river course, meandering. Stein says it was low rainfall. Uh, D. P. Agrawal and Sooth say it was mainly because of drying of the Gagar River that Indus people could not survive anymore. Robert Rikes and Dale say earthquake. So different historians have given different theories. 
even in your NCRT books, even with the Government of India books, we actually do not know, we are not able to conclude exactly what happened with Indus Valley Civilization in terms of decline. The only thing we can definitely say is Indus Valley Civilization and Urban Civilization, very advanced, completely got replaced by a rural civilization called the Vedic Civilization. Vedic civilization was sometimes considered naturally a successor of the Aryan civilization or the Aryan migration. They brought an entire rural setup. Whatever was key features of Indus Valley was completely gone. And even the people moved away. All the people were settled in this northwest region, Mohanjadaro, Harappa, Indus River system. From there, they slowly moved towards Rajasthan, Haryana. And by 1750 BC, the center of the civilization moved completely towards Ganga, Yamuna, Plateau region, which is what today we call Bihar, UP section. So that's the story of Indus Valley civilization. We'll see the Vedic civilization in the next session. Thank you.